So this is what you call an alpine start, which basically means we got up at three. We're gonna go climb that mountain behind me in the dark. Hopefully we're gonna get down in 12 hours, but we'll see. But at least it's not super cold. Just gotta get our gear together under headlamp and get moving. Today's the day that we're tackling Forbidden Peak. This is one of the 50 classic climbs in the US, and it's definitely not an easy one. Basically, once you get up to the ridgeline, you have a knife edge that you climb for a couple hours to get to the summit. After our super early alpine start, we worked our way up the glacier and to what's called the cat scratch by early morning. It's basically the part of the climb where it all bottlenecks and you have to go up the chute to get to the ridgeline. After a series of short ice climbs and some rock jumping, we got to a point where the rock is super loose. At this point, I didn't capture it on camera, but a rock dislodged and hit my knee. I didn't know until after I got off the mountain, but right then I tore my MCL in my knee. The rock was massive and easily weighed a few hundred pounds. Carlos was quick to react and pulled me out of the way. After stopping at the ridgeline for a break, we checked out my knee and decided to keep moving towards the summit. I was in pain, of course. From this point, we began the hard part of the climb as we danced back and forth over the ridgeline and worked our way to the summit. Under that rock, relax. This is just a weird step across. Okay. So you gotta hang from this thing. <laughs> and you get your feet down. I would say for oh shit. This is, <laughs> the hands are huge, and there's another one. Of, so how do you, oh, okay, there. <sighs> What's up, Summit? the summit Carlos Woo! after we made it to the summit we had to turn around and get ourselves back to camp before the Sun drops low in the sky down is actually where most of the accidents happen when you're mountaineering you tend to lose your focus because you've accomplished what you set out to do and the exhaustion starts to set in we took it slow and worked our way back down the safest way we could on the way down is where I really started to feel the pain in my knee I think the adrenaline started to wear off and this is where I really noticed what that boulder did to me. All right guys, we just got back to camp. I have my buff on like this because the horse flies are out of control. It's just been like nonstop buffs. Horse flies, horse flies, and more horse flies. They're really annoying because they like bite you. It was a good climb. It was probably one of the most terrifying things I've done. I'll tell you that for sure. It was insane. That was like the craziest exposure on either side as you're climbing that knife point. I don't know, it's crazy. So essentially, get out of here, horse fly. From here, we basically have the hike out and that's it. We've done three peaks in the last two days and we hike out. So it's 3.30 now. Either we could go right now, head to the cars. It's probably gonna be a two hour hike. It, roughly and then go somewhere get some beer maybe take a shower tonight 
I think that's what we might do, but the other alternative is to stay here, camp out one more night, just sitting here enjoying the Boston Basin, the last look around. I mean, the views from up there were absolutely insane. It was probably one of the coolest, one of the coolest and most terrifying things I've ever done. So, pretty awesome. All right, I gotta find the guys and figure out what we're doing. After a short powwow, we decided to get off the mountain. If I didn't keep moving, I was worried that my knee would swell up and I wouldn't be able to walk. So we took off and head back down. I don't have any footage after this point because this was probably the most painful hike I've ever done. By the end, I could barely walk, but we made it out just as the moon rose and we jumped in our cars and drove to the closest place that had a beer.